apply at 1871.com and become part of the community. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Pat Ryan. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Kevin. Well, welcome. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Welcome to Chicago Founders Stories here at 1871, uh, Chicago's new digital startup hub. My name is Pat Ryan, uh, founder of Incisive Labs. And we're here tonight with the founders and co-founder of Context Media, Rishi Shah and Shraddha Agarwal. Great to have you guys here. Um, so oh, you guys have had an incredible story, incredible growth. Um, it's, uh, you know, the more I, as, as we announced this, I heard people telling me all the great things about your company. But it's not a company a lot of people would encounter uh, in their day-to-day -day life. We've had Grubhub and other things where people might use. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your business. What do you do? Where, where would people encounter you? Uh, to give us a little context. Yeah. So I'm going to kick a lot of questions to Shraddha. Those of you that know me know I talk a lot. So my, my goal here is to let Shraddha do the majority of the speaking. So I'll let her kick it off. Um, well, hopefully you guys won't see us too much by using it. Uh, we're in doctor's offices, and we put up digital screens that play videos on how to live healthier uh, for patients living with a chronic condition, so diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, um, cardiac conditions. So we work with healthcare practices across the nation um, installing the system, and we work with healthcare companies, um, gyms, fitness companies, consumer packaged goods, uh, medical devices, and pharmaceuticals uh, to bring therapy information in addition to nutrition and exercise information. And I'll also say I want to thank uh, Kevin and Pat here and all of you guys for coming out and listening to us. It's always fun for us to come to 1871 because we get to see all the sexy startups. You don't want to use our products. It means you've got a, unless you, you need them, uh, it means you've got a chronic disease. And, um, you know, uh, 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 that's, you know, if you have one, then, then we're great for you. But um, <laughs> we're in 2,200 hospitals and physician practices by the end of the year um, around the country, all 50 states. And, you know, one of the secrets we like to think in our culture is we keep our head down and focused. So if you're a health administrator, a clinic manager, uh, you won't be able to forget about us. If you're a brand manager who buys advertising, we'll follow you around everywhere. But it's kind of fun when we can come to a place like this and meet everybody that we don't get to talk to as much. So thank you for having us and for coming out. Great. Well, we're glad to have you. So this uh, 2200, 20, yeah, we may have to get new chairs for the next one. <laughs> We've been, well, where are these things that so, um, um, so twenty two hundred locations. I mean, so how, how old is the company? Talk about uh, how do you get to I mean, twenty two hundred is a remarkably big footprint for a young company. No, it is. Um, so we're six years old now. So we started in two thousand and six, um, and Shrad and I were both at Northwestern at the time. So those of you that have our business card will see our purple trim all uh, all over it. And um, we, we met over there, and we actually started a um, group of student-run uh, organizations and businesses, so that's, that's how we got our start. And um, we dropped out, um, and we dropped out to, to start this business, and a lot of people thought we were nuts, um, because the product was great. Everybody would agree that, you know, patients needed more education, especially during, before and after their office appointment because that's when all the decision-making happens, and patients don't feel like they're fully informed. But healthcare is really hard. Healthcare is really hard, because it's so fragmented, right? So unlike a lot of industries, or say the consumer web, where if you focus on product, and your product is great, a lot of times that's you know, almost enough. It's not, not ever enough, but it's almost enough. Um, in healthcare, it usually isn't enough. And you've really, really got to crack a very, very hyper-fragmented market. And you may get one big one. We're in some of the HCA uh, uh, systems. We're in some of the Kaiser systems. But nobody's got 20% share. Nobody's got 10% share. Nobody even has 5% share. So it's so fragmented that it's really about picking up a lot of onesies and twosies. And it takes a very, very sophisticated and tenacious sales and marketing effort. And that's been one of our core competencies. Shrava actually built it, so I'll let her maybe talk about it. Well, let me, let, me, let me step back, because I think it's, uh, it's obviously a very impressive business, really interesting story. But uh, one of the things we like to do here at Founder Stories is step back and kind of talk a little bit about um, you know, where the idea comes from. Um, because uh, a lot of people think it's the idea, and then you're successful, and then you make a lot of money, and that's the end of the story. And obviously, a lot goes in between. 
But it's always great to kind of bring us back to that point in time. So you're at Northwestern. Um, this isn't a typical student play. I mean, there are a lot of people talk at, uh, uh, when you go to college campuses, they say undergrads typically have ideas that would ser serve a student market really well, yeah. but aren't necessarily geared at a larger market because they wouldn't see the problem. You guys obviously saw a need in a much larger market that wasn't a student market. So where did that come from? I mean, that's really unusual. Sure. So this is interesting. I was sharing with some people before. Rishi speaks at events. I speak at events. This is the first time we're speaking together at an event. So you're getting us really unplugged here. Um, we were at Northwestern, and Rishi uh, mentioned briefly, we started a few different organizations, um, one of which was called the Institute for Student Business Education. As the name suggests, we were already thinking big. It's the Institute for Student Business Education. For both of us, our interests came from, and for a lot of our classmates too, who were part of the founding team, we wanted to really learn by doing, and not just by reading about how to do. And so the scope of the organization was to learn marketing by doing marketing for other student organizations, um, learning to invest by having our own fund, um, and we've tapped alum for that as well, and um, learning recruiting by recruiting great team members for the organization. One of the initiatives was um, a business magazine. It was called the Northwestern Business Review, and it's still around, still puts out issues every semester. And um, the focus for the business publication was to highlight businesses that were doing well by doing good. And um, in conversation, in writing articles, we came across some phenomenal people. We came across some phenomenal business ideas. Um, and we were going around, and it became a national publication. We're soliciting wow. stories from other students on other campuses, distributing and on you guys founded campuses. This. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've been founders before. Yeah. Yeah, several times over, actually. Media has been sort of a common passion for us. Um, so what's the moment? Like, what's the moment at yeah. which? Um, so you're doing research, you're looking at these companies, but but this is not an idea. I mean, understanding the chronic yeah. disease treatment market is not exactly a. No, no. Some people so run across every day. <laughs> no. So it's interesting. We're sitting one Friday night in my kitchen watching The Godfather. It was three of us, Derek, Ricky, and I. One of my favorite movies. He had never watched The Godfather. One, two, or three. We were watching one, starting uh -huh. right at the start, and that is my favorite still. <laughs> So we um, paused the movie, and we were writing this article about the power of screen communication. Mm. So um, screens in elevators, screens in cabs, and malls, and a lot of different venues. And we were kind of playing pros and cons of which venues is powerful mm -hmm. in educating, whether it's a product, whether it's information, whether it's events. And then we started talking about a lot of other venues where it wasn't as prevalent, but could be very powerful. Mm. Um, we have lived with family members with diabetes, lost grandparents to complications. My mom lives with diabetes, his sister does. And so um, his father is an endocrinologist, and so we've been around waiting rooms, we've been around that system. We've seen the importance of educating on living life with your head up, making incremental small changes. It's hard. I mean, if you tell me not to eat dessert for dinner tonight, is I can do that. I need dessert. <laughs> And so it's hard telling someone living with a chronic condition that you suddenly need to alter your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But showing them, and doctors generally will say, you need to lose weight, you need to live healthier, and here's your prescription refill, see you next quarter. Right. They don't have That's a they lot tell of me time. Every time. <laughs> it's a hard, I mean, it is, it's a hard problem because they tell everybody the same thing, right? Um, lose weight, live healthier, do all these things, but every day you've got to live it. Right. So you have family members that you could identify with the journey. You have a father who's a doctor. So talk about, did you check this out with them? Did you ask them, like, how did you validate the yeah. idea? So I, I think it was all those things. And then what I'll also add is it was a bit of a nexus. So it's, it's kind of hard because we get asked this question all the time. Like, where was the napkin idea? Where, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. I think it was a couple of things that came together. So one part of it is both of us had family. And so we've been there. You know, like, you can't, my sister's three years younger than me. I still remember when she got it. It's tough to just say, okay, I'm a robot. I'm not going to have anything that I shouldn't have anymore. I'm going to take right. this exactly at the right time. Her mom had it. So there was a lot of common reference points there. Sure. But the other interest of ours, which was in healthcare, was mobile. And the reason we were so interested in mobile at the time is both Sharada and I love media. We love, love media. That was probably our one common passion, just getting people the right information. And in media, targeting was the holy grail, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea was there's so much waste. The future is targeted. You're going to see what you should see. And we like that, but we always thought that mobile 
was going to add two more variables to that equation. And we wrote about this well before we even got the idea for context. And so that, this is back 2006? Yeah, like first journal, the end of maybe 05, wow. and NBR. And so we wrote about how there were two other variables, place and time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not enough just to follow you around, which happens on the internet all the time. It's just because you're the right person, I'm going to follow you around. We don't think that alone is the holy grail. Mm -hmm. It's serving you the information when and where you need it. Mm -hmm. And we always thought that'd be through the phone, because the phone knows where you are, it's smart because of that, and so we were looking for something there. Now when we saw these screens that Charlotte was talking about, we got kind of fascinated. And then it clicked, it all came together, because we thought in healthcare, right, this is, it's really peculiar. You don't think of it this way, we have kind of a healthy looking crowd out there, but th this is the story I always tell. You got 525,600 minutes in a year. That's how many minutes there are in a normal year. Now, if you live with a chronic condition, like diabetes, you spend about 40 of them with your doctor. Those 40 minutes are the only time when you can change your therapy. You want to go on insulin, you want to change something, that's it. You can't just wake up, read something, go to the pharmacy and do it yourself. And even with technology, the, the treatments are getting more and more complex. They're bringing the doctor and the patient closer together as consumers get empowered. They're not getting disintermediated. And so we, we saw that, and that we knew personally. We were really into mobile and media, and we thought if we can put these screens up in physician practices and in hospitals, and we can make those 40 minutes better, because there's so much gravity around them, because the decision-making that happens in those 40 minutes is collectively so much more important than in the other 525,520 minutes combined almost, we can really, really make impact. Right? This is the holy grail, the future of media. The information to the right person exactly when and where they can use and it. And very valuable to the advertiser. 